Well, you see those sirens in your feed. You know exactly what that means. Uh, we have more coaching news. As Chris Lowe at ESPN is reporting that Jeff Brom and Louisville are in the process of finalizing a deal to bring Brom back home. He is a Louisville native. Uh, he played at Louisville. He was an assistant coach at Louisville. And, you know, before the hire of Scott Satterfield, it was very much he was on the wish list for the Cardinals. He elected to stay at Purdue, where he has delivered some huge recruiting wins, where he has led the Boilermakers to one of their biggest wins in program history, that 2018 victory over Ohio State. Rondale Moore, David Bell, explosive offenses all the time. Charlie Jones had a fantastic year this season, and he got Purdue to the Big Ten championship game. So now he is going to Louisville. What do we make of the hire first from the Louisville side? How happy are Louisville fans right now? Jeez. You just traded Scott Satterfield for Jeff Brom? Yeah. Like they were, the reaction to Satterfield leaving earlier this week was Louisville fans were like helping him to the door, packing his bags and showing him, you know, remember the airport's only 15 minutes away. They were showing him the way to Cincinnati. And now they get the guy they wanted originally when they ended up with Satterfield. Like if you're a Louisville fan, You've got to be very excited about this and for good reason, because Brom had six very successful seasons at Purdue. It was a good team in the Big Ten. It got to the Big Ten West Championship game this year. It had good offenses. It has produced NFL players, first round picks in the last couple of years. And now he's coming home to do the same thing there. So I think if you're Louisville, there's no reason not to be happy. You've got a coach who wants to be there and you've got a coach that has a history of success. I mean, I, I think they're extremely happy. They clearly wanted to do this in prior years. Mm -hmm. Brom is the native son of Louisville. He played there. He grew up there. It's always been who the power players at Louisville wanted to go higher. I don't know that the AD wanted Satterfield out, but I do know that that the brokers, the power guys, the money guys at Louisville definitely did. That's why Scott Satterfield took the Cincinnati job, okay? Louisville has a great thing going right now. They are serious players in the NIL game. They are recruiting better than they ever have due to the NIL money that is flowing in there. Like you don't leave that if you're Scott Satterfield, if you don't think you're going to get fired in a year or two. You go, you restart your clock, you get six guaranteed years from Cincinnati, even though Cincinnati's NIL stuff apparently is nothing to be spoken of at this point. Jeff Brom, in my opinion, has kind of maximized what you can do at Purdue. And I don't want to speak negatively. He's done a great job at Purdue. But the moment the Big Ten does away with divisions, whether that's in one year or three years, or whenever UCLA and USC join, they got the Board of Regents meeting coming up for, for UCLA. We'll see if UCLA is even allowed to go. Uh, is the moment that Purdue probably adds about a half loss per year additionally within conference to their schedule because of, of the division that they are in. I think he has maximized Purdue uh, to about as good as anybody can do, right? And that's one of the best Purdue runs in my lifetime. Louisville has real potential with the divisionless ACC going forward you don't have to play Clemson, FSU, NC State every single year. You're going to get a couple more shots at like a, you know, a Duke, Pitt, although Pitt's been pretty good. You know, the schools like that, Louisville's clearly will, willing to spend. And also, who you can recruit at these schools could not be more different, okay? Louisville, you can get in anybody. Like, like I'm not – and I'm a Florida State grad, so is Danny – I know FSU's better academically now than it was. We when, understand when we got Purdue's there. struggles getting guys in. Yeah, <laughs> Purdue's, a, Purdue's like an academic saying. school. Yeah, you know, I mean, Purdue, you have actual admission standards in the recruiting class. You're going to get some exemptions, but there are some guys you just can't take at Purdue. Liberty, if it's like, all right, 2 0 core, couple, couple, you know, you, you, you took the SAT, Louisville. I, I think I said Liberty, excuse me, Louisville. Yeah, you're in. Cool. So it's the opportunity to win a lot more. You get the NIL game. You can recruit a wider base of player and a more talented player than you can at Purdue. And I think it's going to be rare to see a Big Ten coach leave for a non-Power 2 job. But mm -hmm. Louisville has a lot of booster money that many ACC and you know Big 12, Pac-12 schools don't actually have. I was kind of prepared to hear that Louisville wasn't going to be able to run the number up. And like six thirty-five, if that's you know that's what Lowe is reporting right now, I I don't know I don't know if there's other like emotions or conversations that were happening behind the scenes, but felt like Purdue might have been able to match that. I don't know. It's yeah, no, it this is, is go ahead. This is like a hometown kind of discount. Yeah, because he could probably make eight a year. 
if Purdue wanted to back up the especially big with the new TV money that's coming mm-hmm. in, they'll be a yeah. drop in the bucket. They were like, "Hey, sure, you want ten? Like we can throw that." In. I mean, to me, I think this is a huge get for Louisville. I think it's huge for the ACC because I thought it would looked rough that Satterfield, even though you know he's going to Cincinnati, it's like, ooh, that that just if you're Jim Phillips, you're kind of watching the landscape to see what's happening. Now you're getting a guy to come back that I just this infuses some life. I totally agree with Bud when you're saying about he's maximized what he's done, and I'm sure he's probably aware of that. Like, all right, we just made it. We just won our division. We we got to play for a Big Ten title. But you've and you've you've pulled off some upsets, which have been great. I mean, they're the spoiler makers for a reason. But to sustain that, like, I, and I think your your drop off, your your floor is a lot lower at Purdue in a bad year, which your floor at Louisville should be a bowl team. You know, six or seven wins should be the worst case scenario for you at Louisville. So yeah, and it was mentioned in the though. chat like that. Brom only went thirty six and thirty four. I mean, Purdue in the four years before he got there was nine and 39. So yeah. it's it, to, to dismiss what he's done because of the overall record is widely is very wide of the actual point in the context of what happened there. And and four bowls in five non COVID years mm-hmm. at Purdue is is remarkably good. The, the question that Jeff Brom, I think one of the reasons why he's leaving, other than the fact that like Louisville's his home and he's openly said that he'd be interested in coming back to Louisville before, right? Whether he knew that was going to get out or not is a, a, a different question. Here's the question he doesn't want to hear. All right, let's say, and Denny's right, that they probably have a drop-off coming because sustaining 9-3, and 8-4 and four at Purdue is, is not, not doable, unless you just have a joke of a non-conference every year. Let's say he did sustain it. He's going to have boosters ask him, Jeff, how do we get to the next level? Eventually, your donors, if they're giving you money, they want to see improvement. It's really hard to tell these guys, you need to pay me a whole lot of money because I'm maxing you guys out. There is no next level. These dudes who are rich enough to donate a lot to schools but not rich enough to own an NFL team, they want to actually believe that they can win the Big Ten when you can't at Purdue, right? It's just not not doable in the college ball landscape. That's going to eventually lead to people getting tired of you. And then when you have one down year, like Danny mentioned, it's going to come. They're going to be like, oh, can this guy still coach? And eventually, at first, they celebrate you maximizing, and then they don't, they, they kind of lose sight of the fact that you are maximizing, and then they get tired of you when you slip up one time. Yeah, six seasons is a lot in the modern tenure. Mm-hmm. You, and if yeah. you, like at Purdue, realistically, and we've talked a lot about this, once they do away with the divisions, you're going to have Ohio State, Michigan, Penn State. When USC joins, like those are the clear cut top four teams. So it's kind of like a race for fifth. And Matt Rule just got hired at Nebraska. And right. So it's going to be just got hired. And by Illinois has four players on the All America team. And <laughs> Illinois has four <laughs> players on the All America. But in the ACC, it's been Clemson, and I know Florida State looks better, but there's no there's no like stranglehold on the top three spots or four spots. Like and even Miami, like traditionally, yes, but they were a mess this past season. So you're like, why can't we just challenge Clemson? Like you can go instantly, you can become competitive. Florida State, you know, Clemson, whoever you want, I think. And you can see that. You can picture that in your mind. Hey, why not? Or at Purdue, yeah, we might be able to beat Penn State if we go things go perfectly. But to get to the level where we're beating all of them, that's a, it's a lot tougher ask. 